Oh, it's mm. so much nicer on the eyes, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, everyone. It's the drinker, and Az here, and we've managed to reunite to do a super chat square up. Extreme, <laughs> Extreme close up. <laughs> We're at opposite ends of the spectrum here. I have to sit really far back from my webcam, webcam and Az is right up against it. <laughs> I've, I've had to, I'm pulling my chair right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're you're fine there. That's pretty good balance. Pretty good balance. Um, yeah, as as most of you who tuned into last Thursday's stream know that uh, the super chats got fucked up because YouTube decided to make some changes to the back end of YouTube Studio. It was totally worth it for that fucking dark theme on Studio, which I'm in like maybe five minutes per day. Uh, but yeah, the result <laughs> was I couldn't see any of the old super chats, and I had to wait until it was all fixed before I could come back in and look at them. And they finally have fixed it like a week later. So. Here we are, and Az has graciously agreed to join me for a little while to see if we can get through these. Right, so I'm thanks, just telling man. Nick Ricada to fuck off. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right. it's, thank you for yeah, uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's been a right mess, hasn't it, with Soup Chats this last week? Ah, it's just been haven't shit, been able man. to access them or. Because I thought uh, like it, it'll be fixed by the next day or something, and that's fine. I can just do a follow up nice and quick. And then it's like, nah, nah, nah. It, wait, it wasn't until today that it finally started working again. So, fuck's sake. Oh, I, I managed to get it going yesterday. Right. Because I had a stream yesterday. But uh, yeah, it wasn't working the day before. So, I think, it, I think it only came back yesterday. Right. Okay. Well, at least we're, we're here now. We've got it going. So, I guess we should. Make use of it while we still can before it fucks up again, eh? Yay! So, hello to everyone in chat, and I hope the people who sent the super chats the other week um, are here now, so you can hear us address them. But it'll get uploaded to my second channel anyway, so not to worry. Mm. Someone in chat was asking as as well, saying, "What's the, on the agenda for the next movie?" Uh, that's going to be tomorrow night, and Mauler and I are going to be discussing uh, the world's end. We're going to bring the Cornetto trilogy to a, a an epic conclusion. So, looking forward to that. Nice. Uh, yeah. So that'll be tomorrow night at nine o'clock UK time. Uh, anyway, let's let's see what we got here. So, uh, scroll into the the end of the list. Yeah. So the first one here was from Dan Ronan, who said, "Would love to play this and Harold and Kumar escape Guantanamo Bay <laughs> on a constant loop for Twitter. Kick back with a pint and just watch the fun." Oh yeah. yeah. Watch people lose their fucking minds. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, you just don't get comedies like this anymore. Uh, Mikey Gustler says, funny scene is Ben and Matthew are talking about Ben's adopted son. And after he says his kid is okay, Matthew replies, well, at least you got to choose your own. <laughs> While the camera pans towards a picture of him and his special needs son. <laughs> it's so fucking dark, but it's so great at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you just, you can't get humor like that anymore. And it's criminal uh, cause it's funny cause it's taking them. It's just taking the piss out of Hollywood, um, elitism and, and, you know, fake, uh, you know, their, their fake sort of altruism and, and whatnot. At least you're going to pick yours. Mm. It's not, you know, so <laughs> they're not you get right down to it. <laughs> yeah. Just, people need to loosen up. Just loosen up. Take off your bra, you know? Yeah. Here's a question, actually. Um, and cook Mustafi says, why do you hate George R. R. Martin so much? I don't hate him, but like I think he's really fucking mismanaged his his writing career. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong; he's been fantastically successful and stuff, but he is never ever going to finish the the Song of Ice and Fire series. Never. It'll be lucky if he gets Winds of Winter done. Um, and it's just all because he, the lady loves milk tray. Yeah, he um, allowed himself to create a story that was way too convoluted and had way too much going on for him to ever be able to tie it all up. Um, and I think it's put him off ever going into it. He's allowed himself to be distracted by like every convention and publicity event and fucking press tour uh, and, and producing gig for the TV shows and every shiny object he can see and basically anything apart from actually working on his fucking book. Uh, and as a result, yeah, like that's why the the series partly why this the tv show was so shit towards the end because they had nothing to work with um and yeah there's going to be a lot of really dissatisfied fans out there that are never going to get a resolution to the the books so that sucks and it's all on fucking him mm. yeah no so, uh, and he's just announced a new book that's nothing to do with 
what he's meant to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Just so anything uh, yeah. apart from finishing wins the winter, eh, George? Yeah, he don't he don't want none of this. He don't yeah. want none of it. He's too fucking old. You know what? If I was him, I'd just be like, I'm too old, I'm too fat, and I'm too tired to do this anymore. I'm just gonna turn it over to a ghostwriter, give him my notes, and just like wish him the best of luck. Yeah, and at least good. it'll get done. <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah. You'll just you'll get like a dump truck full of like written notes that would just like drop on the guy's desk. Like, there you go. <laughs> Need it next spring. Can. Yeah. Uh what's the next one? RRTNZ says, Drinker, you drunk dude disguised as an even drunker dude. Been looking forward to your take on this film. Another one that can't be made today. Seems Hollywood has gone full retard. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> they have indeed. Uh so well, comics, comics have gone full retard again. They always so, have. So Kickstarter just hired a new uh, comic consultant that is meant to uh, network, try and bring new creators to the platform uh, and liaise with the current ones and people that don't want to join the platform uh, find out why and try and alleviate their fears. First thing they did, block hundreds upon hundreds of independent comic creators on Twitter today. First thing is their job. Lovely. Yeah. that That's the kind of mentality that you're dealing with now. Uh, and I wonder why the report. comic industry is getting absolutely butt-fucked by manga. There you go. <laughs> I cannot think why. Yeah. Uh, what's the next one here? Uh, from the same guy, Hail Drinker. For a change, I'll recommend a drinking song, Home for a Rest, by Scottish-Canadian band Spirit of the West. The anthem mm -hmm. of my old drinking days. May it serve you well and yours. Cheers. Cheers to you, man. Thank you for the recommendation. Nicky D says, When do you guys think this current superhero craze will begin to wane? And what genre do you think will take its place? Uh, I think we're, we're in the end stages of the comic book craze right now. I think it's starting to wane now. Certainly from the big mainstream studios like Marvel. Yeah. Uh, Shang-Chi looks like it's going to be a massive flop for the studio. There's absolutely no chatter whatsoever about Eternals. I mean, they've even, they've only ever put out one trailer and it's out three months, two months. Yeah, it's the end of the year, isn't it? It's November yeah, or something. They, no? Yeah, they just they are hiding that film like a like a trooper. Uh, Black Widow was a disaster for them. What <laughs> If has got absolutely no traction on Google Trends. Yeah. Mm. I just want to bring this one up. Yeah, look what happened to them. They just disappeared, man. That's weird. When ScarJo gets a disc. But yeah, they vanished, <laughs> haven't they? Man, they used to be amazing. No, nah. Sad. A lot of bra trickery going on there, but still Could magical. Be. She's had a kid, hasn't she? So I can sometimes yes. deflate them. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's start. If I was her kid, I'd be fucking milking them dry as well. <laughs> but yeah, like Marvel's uh, Phase 4 is, is just doing nothing for anyone, I think. So. Phase uh, 4. I don't know, man. I, I've, there's times when I feel just fucking tapped out with comic book movies. I just feel burned out with them. I don't want to like watch them. I don't really want to talk about them so much. And yeah... Fuck, I need a break, maybe. I, I think that, but then I watch the the old Marvel films again, like Iron Man, Avengers, stuff like that, and they're great. I they just are. think it's the current crop is so boring and preachy, and and they've taken out all the fun, and they've taken out everything that made them interesting and entertaining. And so they are just now just... just I mean, Black Widow was a dour mess. It was just dour. It's boring, just bored to the hilt of that, and it was stupid. And then he, the noise at the end, it was just noise. Mm. Nothing was happening. It was just noise and explosions and banging and nobody getting hurt. What? What's the point? What's the stakes? Yeah. Why do I care? Yeah, I, I think if some of it is maybe just hiring <laughs> shitty directors and shitty writers that like they just hired to give them a chance. You know, and they've got no real experience. Uh, mm -hmm. The result is, yeah, bad movies. I uh, think there is a lot to that. Uh, Nigel Milliken says, Drinker, I really liked your Doctor Who videos and was wondering which was your favourite Doctor from the original 1 to 8 and the new Who 9 to 13, including the War Doctor. Oh, I think I answered this one, actually. Um, yeah, I remember this question, so I think I answered. Uh, my original one was... Um, 
Oh, oh sh- what was Tom, uh, Tom yeah? Baker. Tom Baker. Tom Baker was yeah. my my answer for one to eight, and then it was ten. David Tennant for the the new ones. Um, yeah. Chuxenhausen says, two-part chat. I watched the new promo trailer for Cobra Kai where they're bringing back the All-Valley Tournament. And I must say, it has me worried. For one, they emphasize Amanda and Tara. And two, uh, least talented fighters on the show, so God help us if they meet in the finals. <laughs> yeah, they're shit. They cannot fight to save their lives. Uh, second, Hawk was shown, but his mohawk was not. Ah, oh, no! Would the writers have cut off his hair Samson style? Surely not. Surely they wouldn't do that to Hawk. Um, yeah, well, Hawk's season two. guy now, isn't he? Yeah, he is actually. Um, but I, I want him to keep the hawk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like season two focused quite a bit on the strong female characters and they, they dialed it back a bit for season three. And I just hope they don't go down that road again because, yeah, neither of those girls can fight. Not like the guys can. I mean, some of them are kind of shit as well, but like Miguel and um, and Hawk are good fighters. Um, I'm trying to think of the other one. I think there's one other guy who's pretty decent. Um, but yeah, like some of them, you can tell the ones that have put in a bit of work and uh, were fighters to begin with or whatever. You know, Netflix uh, are dying to work this up. Oh yeah, you can tell. You can absolutely tell because it's everything uh, they hate. It's like irreverent. It kind of like portrays characters like Johnny and and Daniel in like a really sympathetic light. And yeah, you you can't have that. So yeah, I just hope they don't do it. Um. Unhinged Entertainment says the drinker and as talk, tro- <laughs> talking about yeah. Tropic Thunder, my booty juice is gushing. Hey, <laughs> yeah. booty sweat, booty sweat, booty 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 sweat. Jester of Roanoke says, "Hey guys, what movie uh, let you know comedy is dead?" Yeah, so what was your your hint that comedy was shit? Probably uh, Ghostbusters. 2016. Ghostbusters twenty sixteen because I just did not want to see that one bit. Yeah, no way. That was that was dire. Thunder Force was fucking awful. That was obviously much more modern. But yeah, I ain't so they, watching these. I ain't watching these things. Yeah. No. Yeah, Ghostbusters was the the one. Um, Jock Nerdy says uh, they could never make this movie today. This movie's awesome. Agreed. Um, the friend Rizian Sweatshop gave me five pounds. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Otten says hail drinker and as. Les Grossman, need I say more? <laughs> no, nah, yeah. you don't need to say anything else. <laughs> Tom Fantastic. Cruise nailed it. <laughs> uh, also friend from Fen Rizian Sweatshop, how do you think a modern remake of Tropic Thunder would be? Uh, terrible. It wouldn't even get made, probably. Uh, you'd have to cut out about 90% of the jokes, so I don't even know what it would be based around now. Uh, oh. you, could, you couldn't have uh, Kirk Lazarus. You couldn't no. have Simple Jack. No. Uh, you probably couldn't have Les Grossman, actually, because of the associations with a certain Harvey. Um, uh, and the name indicates that he could be a certain yeah. group of uh, people. Yeah. You couldn't have the jokes about the closeted gay rapper, so that would no. be allowed. What's left? Jack Black being annoying? Um that's, that's probably, what they yeah. would do is the, the black rapper would have the simple Jack role, but he'd be doing a play, which obviously wasn't simple Jack. It'd be like Boys in the Hood, the, the, the stage play. And then he'd come out on stage and everyone would accept him, including the terrorists. <laughs> probably. And then some of the terrorists would turn to each other and they would like hug and kiss. Because they're like, and we're gay too. Yeah, we everyone's have, everyone's gay. Everyone's every, the gay. Fabulously gay. Um, <laughs> Oki Native says, as is drinker um, plus, uh, sorry, plus uh, negative or equal to look at than Chrissy. Um. Oh wow. Uh, drinker is a very handsome man. Uh. <laughs> so you know. And Chrissy's I not a drink. handsome man, though. So, <laughs> and Chrissy is not a handsome man. So, I guess, I guess, drinker wins. Yeah, I'm not as beautiful as Chrissy, though. She is. She no, is she's a that. she's a very attractive woman, and you are not an attractive woman. No, <laughs> but as I identify as one. Oh no! <laughs> now it's all gone wrong. So this is a great quote. This one here. Oh wait, uh, that's not the one I was looking for. Um, yeah, it's just chats are moving so quick. Tropic Thunder in Afghanistan. You might as well now. 
You know, it's in the news again. Hey, they've promised to be good. Yeah, they're going to be inclusive, so I believe them. Oh, I do too. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, man. that's uh, Yeah, that was 20 years well spent. Um, Rob H. says, Fantastic movie. This and Superbad dominated the last couple of years in high school. Yeah, Superbad was another good one. Um, Emma Stone. Yeah. Better Mama says, Our DJ really did Tropic Thunder's DVD commentary in character. You can listen to it on YouTube. <laughs> I really need to listen to that. That would be incredible. Uh, ah! Yeah. <laughs> That word's been keeping our people down. No, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Roger Puzzitello says, Tropic Thunder, Edward, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood are a great triple feature of movies that examine Hollywood culture. Yeah, indeed. Um, I think, yeah, that's a pretty good uh, rundown of it. Uh, Jack Sun says, "How come you don't do game? Uh, sorry, more game reviews. You're trashing of Final Fantasy VIII. It was funny as hell. I just didn't you like around. Final Fantasy VIII? Nah, that that fucking game, man. Honestly, I still have traumatic flashbacks to the final boss battle, right? Because I I remember this. It took me ninety minutes of fighting, ninety minutes of constant fighting against the final boss. And I don't know if it's just because I was shit, uh, but that was pretty much a whole. No, that that kind of sounds maybe about right." Because it turns into like five different forms. Like you're you're on your last sliver of health, and you think you've beat it, and then it transforms into something else, and it's like health go health bar goes right back up to the maximum. <laughs> <and you gotta laughs> <fight again. laughs> I've never been so fucking happy to finish a game in my life. It actually, I, me, I'm a fan of fancy Fargo, so I love. Yeah, I mean, I love seven, but um, yeah, I think even I didn't actually finish eight when it came out like i got it when it came out back in 99 got to mm -hmm. a certain point and i just fucking lost the head with it and just moved on to st other stuff and then about seven or eight years later i was just looking through my old playstation discs and there it was and i thought right you motherfucker it's time i'm gonna beat you and i don't care how long it takes i'm just gonna like devote all my time to finishing it and i finally did uh but yeah because of that i just got bitter memories of it i, I love the characters I love the story. Um, the drawing system is what got me. We have to draw the magic out to learn a spell. And then you, if you use a spell, it, it like uses one magic. So yeah. you had to like store as many as you possibly could. So you spent, you did spend a lot of fights, literally just drawing magic and drawing magic and drawing magic. Um, and that could feel like a bit of a chore. You had to steal things off enemies, I remember as well, right? To upgrade your weapons, you needed to steal or, or recover like items. Mm -hmm. And there were certain ones that were only available at one like specific part of the game. And if you just uh -huh. happened to miss it, you were fucked. You couldn't do anything further with that weapon for the rest of the game. And so that happened to me. So I was fighting with shit swords and stuff all throughout the game. Um, just because it's like of triple that. triad, if you you would um if you won a specific card off a person, then they would move on to another city. However, there were some that you'd have to lose a card to. Yes. For so them, the mechanics so, of this... Yeah, the mechanics of the game were a bit mental, and the story was batshit crazy. Like, everyone yeah. was everyone's related to each other from, like, their childhood. They were all orphans or something. Yeah. And they all just kind of forgot about it. Yeah. That was, like, literally the story. <laughs> And the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, what do you call them? The stewardess. I don't, what, what do you call them? The matron yeah. of the people's home was actually Sid's wife and Sid's wife was a deer. Yes. So, so the, the matron was actually a deer. It's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. I, I might be trashing your memories of it now that I'm bringing it up. I've just like brought up bad <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, I, I I loved them. I mean, I loved them. Uh, they were crazy. You know, I'm not going to profess to understanding everything that went on at all. Um, but I just, you know, they were great. I thought they were just great characters. Uh, crazy times. Huge game. I loved, I mean, I'm an RPG madman. And I'm sort of pissed off that in this, in this developed age of gaming, which is now probably, I think, one of the laziest eras of gaming we've ever had, 
with the best technology at our fingertips. Um, we've just seen RPGs die because they, you know, they take work, and people are like, why take work when you can just make an annual franchise and chuck, chuck the same shit out every fucking year? And it's just like, what happened to all those great independent RPGs that just came out out of nowhere? And you can't, uh, you can't really have independent games anymore that will make any impact on the market. You know, it's like little mm. indie movies trying to trying to become like a mega blockbuster that makes a billion dollars. Like it's just not going to happen. They don't have the market in or anything like that. But like, you do get that paranormal activity every now and again. Yeah, yeah. There's always a chance. Um, but yeah, I, I miss older games like that. And it's I blame the people now who who complain about games being too hard and they just want an easy mode for everything. It's like just watch a movie if you just want the story. Yeah. Like it, you don't even want to interact with it because it's too fucking hard, or you can't stand like having to try watch a, a playthrough. Watch a YouTube vid. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Um, but you have reminded me. I want to get, I want to get the triple triad game. I want to get it all. <laughs> I want it all. All the cards, like you can physically get them. Yeah. But yeah, I, I am sorry for people. I, I haven't done more video game reviews. But, um, like I did the Resident Evil 8 one recently. Um, that was good. I, I really want to do more because it's fun. It's just, you don't, it's not always the same audience. So like a lot of the people who, who watch my channel for movie reviews, they're not going to be interested in gaming. But Why don't you nice. try? Um, sure, but it, it it's, it's not going to impact your channel in a negative way. And it's just going to give those people that do like those those things a little bit of fun. And if it's not something that you were, you know, gonna gonna uh, compromise another video out, why not? I mean, I'd, yeah. I'd love to see you play the, the Final Fantasy VII remake. Well, I've got it. I've got it. It's it's sitting in my drawer right now. The there cellophane wrapper's still on it, but it's there. And um, you can you can purchase a a well, you can pre-order for next year anyway. A, a one in four, or a, a one in tw uh, t uh, th six or something maybe a bit higher uh scale model of uh lady dimitrescu oh yes there you go boobs and all just get some out if you want them yeah uh i'll keep that in mind um <laughs> if you get yeah the... i i did i thought once about you know that could be what my second channel was for gaming uh hmm. But then it's become like more for for reviews of older films, that sort of thing. So yeah. Um, anyway, it's something to think about. But yeah, I will definitely do more video game reviews. Um, Stekio nineteen ninety says, so this stream is just going to be talking about how good Robert Downey Jr. was, and I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, we did spend a lot of time talking about that, and it was great. Uh, but he Rob was H, uh, on the subject of ragtime ragtag team of misfits. Uh, Suicide Squad gave me hope where Masters of the Universe killed it. Kevin Smith went full retard. Yeah. <laughs> he did indeed. Uh, but yeah, Suicide Squad was all right. Um, I had fun with it. It definitely had its problems, and it was probably a bit too long. But overall, I had a laugh with it. That's all I expected. Yeah, I, I've seen it twice now. Um, enjoyed it a little bit more second time. Yeah. Um, maybe because I knew what was coming, and I knew sort of the beats of it. So I was already prepared for sort of like the beats of it, and uh, yeah, it's it's just a fun film. It's a fun film. Yeah, Alex K says, "Fun fact: Robert Downey Jr. was Oscar nominated for this role." Yeah, we were right. talking about that before. Yeah. Discman fifteen, drinker, you sweet talking cinema file. Your adult screen name should be Angus McTenderloins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Uh, Rog H, give me a super sticker. Thank you, man. Long Ripper sixty nine says, three monsters <laughs> as." Cut it to two max or you'll die soon. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had three monsters in one day. Oh, that's heart attack territory. Um, James Ross says, was able to catch a live stream. My two favorite reviewers. Thank you. Uh, Marksman of 117B. As have you seen the Netflix movie The Wandering Earth yet? A solid movie with a silly premise, but a core theme of family. Uh, yes, I have. I enjoyed it. It's a Chinese film um with british subtitles uh you know that i'm a i'm a i'm a toy guy uh you can actually pre-order on sideshow collectibles uh the three main uh characters from the army 
the captain, the female, and the other guy with the big heavy gun, you can actually pre-order one in six scale uh, models of them, and they look incredible because the outfits they have, of course, are amazing. But yeah, are you aware of the Wandering Earth drinker? It's not something I'm too familiar with, man. No. Uh, the sun is expanding at too at too quick a rate, and it's going to consume the Earth in like a couple of hundred years or so. So, um, uh, Earth, they create underground cities, and they plant half the Earth with rocket thrusters. Right. So it becomes they, a spaceship. They, yeah. So they, and they they're moving Earth out of the solar system to go to a, a solar system where they can rest in, where it's going to be fine, but that's going to take like thousands of years to get there. So this is like a generational journey. Uh, and this is just the start of it. So this is just the start of them leaving Earth and um, trying to get past Jupiter's uh, gravitational pull to start with. Damn. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, about, it's about family. It's a nice concept. And it's uh, got really good special effects, and it's crazy, and it's doesn't know when to stop. <laughs> but I it's enjoyed like, it. I did like enjoy any good it. Japanese film. Yeah. Uh, no, that sounds all right. I like the Earth yeah. is indeed a spaceship. Yes, <laughs> the spaceship. Yes. Uh, Nick Macavina says, "Drinker, you infallible imbiber of intoxicants, you. God bless yeah. you guys for covering this gold standard of movie making. Have either of you seen In Bruges? It's a dark comedy worth conversation oh. to. No, but I need to. Hmm. I need uh, to. Oren Lidra uh, gave me a super chat. Uh, sorry, a super sticker, so thank you. Um, Andy Lid Lidden says, best role of Tom Cruise ever. Took a while through the film until I realized who it was. Brilliant. <laughs> Laugh at SJWs who don't get this film is pointing out our stereotypes and racism way above our, their heads. <laughs> Pretty oh, yeah. much, yeah. They just do, they don't understand it. No. Um, Kaiden Oz says, if y'all haven't listened to the commentary track, you have to, Drinker. Freaking gold. Plus, as per the show, RDJ does stay in character through the whole thing. It made me hate Jack Black even more. <laughs> All right, that'd be interesting then. Uh, Doug Kelly, you both rock. Talk on Edge of Tomorrow one day. Uh, well, I've done a review of it already, so um, I think I've covered it pretty well. I really like Live, that film, though. Live, Die, Repeat, is that? Yeah. 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 It's a good film. Uh, yeah, I, I really like it. Cool. Are they still doing that? I think so. I think I think they're making a sequel. I would, I would happily see Emily Blunt kicking ass again. Um, the ending's yeah. great. Where he just yeah. walks into the, you know, where she is. It's just, it's just really good. Just has a little chuckle to himself. You know? Yeah, he know he knows what the score is, and you know it's, it's good shit. Yeah, um, I like. I mean, Tom's a crazy fuck, crazy motherfucker, but um, he is the last. He is the last movie star. He really is like one of the few guys who is a, still a big box office draw. And you know, as crazy as it is, it doesn't interfere too much with his work. It doesn't seep into what he makes. You know, little things here and there, but generally speaking, he just gets on with the job. And so I respect that. Um, and yeah, he can go from everything from Les Grossman in Tropic Thunder to like doing movies like Collateral or Born on the Fourth of July or, or oh, yeah. um, Edge of Tomorrow. You're like, you know, a full range of stuff or all the, the excellent Mission Impossible movies, uh, especially the later ones. They were great fun. Um, Grant Green says Tropic Thunder kind of reminds me of Ricky Gervais uh, Extras which also had Ben Stiller in the first episode <laughs> yeah being an absolute dick Yeah, I remember that one <laughs> yeah it's kind of like that um, like I, I was an extra once upon a time and yeah some of it is very relatable <laughs> for sure <laughs> just the fucking endless sitting around doing nothing the Patrick uh, Stewart one was great yeah I love the Ross Kemp one <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's just with Vinnie Jones. Yeah, with Vinnie Jones is like, Oh, Kemp, what's this about you saying you're harder than me? It's just a pussy. It's just absolute yeah. pussy in the show. Yeah. He's definitely not a pussy in real life, folks. I'll tell no, you No, no. Have you seen that bit where the guy points a gun at him? In When he's doing the tour around, the, when he's going around the world to the dangerous places. Yeah, yeah. The guy, like, points a point. He's, like, stood only a few feet away from him. He's arguing with him, getting him more and more aggressive, and he just 
puts this rifle right at him, and Ross Kemp just grabs the barrel of it and pulls it up the way. And he's just like cool as a fucking cucumber. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to shoot me? Is that what you want to do? You want to do this? And eventually the guy just lowers the gun and Ross Kemp just like storms away. It's like, fucking hell, man. Not many people would do that. But he's got kahunas, man. Yeah, this guy's uh, been to some of the most dangerous places on earth. Yeah. And he's been yeah. speaking to some of the craziest motherfuckers that, that will shoot you with it and they won't care. Yeah. Oof. Uh, right on camera. Um, yeah. Boba, Boba Yogi here says, fucking coof, you should both be in Vegas. Yeah, and I saw the, the pictures from that. That just looked like an absolute blast. Uh, yeah, looks so good. If they do a meet up in Vegas next year and you can actually travel again, I'll I'll go for sure. Let's, I'd say that's totally worth it. <laughs> uh, Farewell Thunderchild says, sorry for being AWOL. I tried a drinking game on your stream with Dank. Every time I or we was said I drank, I shot out a kidney. <laughs> 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 I had Farewell Thunderchild on um, on a stream. Um, we did Dog Soldiers. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Nice little horror film from like the, the 2000s, I think. Mm. Uh, yeah, really nice guy. Just got in touch and we were able to sort out a stream. Um, Mick V. Peel says, two questions. Uh, would you like to be a sponsored by Toilet Duck? Yeah. Uh, with what drink does it go best, pure or mixed? Uh, yeah, you better have it neat, I would say. Bit of neat toilet duck, little shot, get you fired right up. Uh, Clamum says, "My God, is Tom Cruise hilarious in this?" Absolutely. Um, D Matthews, hey fellas, drinker, I'm still holding out hope Play that you'll yeah. adopt. I'm, I'm going to need a bigger drink as your catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> that could work actually. Um, Ngo yyy says, "This is flaming dragon." <laughs> yeah, this is flaming dragon. This is flaming dragon. <laughs> you're gonna have to get a way, binding fucking resolution from the un to keep me from destroying you you can't you can't even criticize if somebody goes this is flame and wagon because the guy that does it reggie lee is american <laughs> so even reggie lee is putting on an accent to put that on so uh, but i think reggie lee is um part chinese but I you know, don't know if it's doesn't right. matter. <laughs> it's this that is. Um, Babrin three fourteen says, "Hey drinker, after watching most of your previous streams, I figured I owe you something, especially now that you're doing one of my favorite comedies. So that was five dollars you donated. So thank you, man. I appreciate it." Um, Trans conservative waifu says, "You are my favorite reviewer. Keep it up. Thank you." Um, also from Farewell Thunderchild, how is, is that? How Tom Cruise recruits Scientologists? <laughs> yeah, just yells at them. Um, mm. I random says I like Matthew McConaughey's story arc he thinks his client's getting screwed out of a DV DVR so he goes to the jungle just to deliver it and then saves everybody's life by clunking it into an RPG <laughs> yeah <laughs> there is genuine payoff to the TiVo box yes uh, yeah. Stur I love how he just vanishes after that like after he's done his bit and the helicopter takes off he just runs off into the jungle and that's him done uh, Sterling Sapien says, "Be waiting till Chinese New Year for my man to cry." <laughs> yeah, that was the line from RDJ there. Um, Frank Spossato, this movie and Kelly's Heroes are the best war films. There can never be a war film that is ever good or real enough. War comedies are far more honest than most will admit to. Uh, indeed. Hey, Blackadder! Blackadder goes forth is some of the the funniest yet darkest humor you'll you'll get when it comes to wartime. Yeah, particularly the final episode, it oh. just becomes properly serious. Um, what a, what an interesting move to do it that way. Um, Joe Rias says, Les Grossman is based on a producer, Scott Rudin. I didn't know that. Um, Irelia Souza says, as in Drinker, talking about one of my favorite comedies. Yes, please. I started fangirling when I saw the thumbnail, and I bet you've already <laughs> been told this, but you're both handsome Brits. No, oh, thanks. No, oh, I'm not, but thank you for the love. <laughs> Uh, Big Cave, sorry, Big Dave K says, Drinker, do you think we'll ever get over ourselves and go back to making the sort of offensive movies we grew to know and love? Sincerely, the hyena animator. Oh, yes, he he did a cartoon of me, like, well, a hyena with my voice. It was fucking great. Nice. Uh, just laughing his ass off and then falling off a chair. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I, I honestly don't think so. I don't see how we can move back to the kind of films that we had before. I'd love to think that one day we'll look back on this age of movie making and be like, man, everyone just became total uptight arseholes during that, that little phase. I'm glad it's over now. But I just can't uh, see it. Yeah. Ew. Shway. Ricky uh, Gervais is our last hope. I know. I, I think he's kind of ostracized by Hollywood now. He's insulted them too many times. And the man just clearly doesn't give a shit anymore. No. But he can make whatever he wants. Yeah, like certainly over here in the UK, yeah, he's got free reign to do whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen that movie, or sorry, the, the show Afterlife that he's done. He's mm. done a couple of seasons of that. That is brilliant, like genuinely great. Like funny, but like dark as well. Yeah, he says uh, third se- he's re- just wrapped filming the third season, and yeah. then that's it. That's it. It's three seasons and out with that one. Yeah. Smart he, as well. This, he knows yeah, when this, to finish. Exactly. He did it with the office and he did it with extras. He knows a story and he knows when it's over. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's not like. Because, yeah, but you know, he's got plenty of ideas, I guess, and he's always happy to move on to the next one rather than mm-hmm. mine, mine one out to death, you know? And they're, they're, I mean, they're interesting concepts. I mean, the office was, was completely different at the time. And then uh, Derek was, uh, you know, about a, a mentally disabled man but it wasn't you know it wasn't insulting at all uh and then of course this is about a man dealing with uh, the death of his wife and, and suicide yeah so these are you know these are interesting con very interesting concepts for comedy heavy stuff but like it's it's interspersed with just incredible bits of humor mm. uh, and really poignant moments and i think it's something that we've touched upon like when we've done other movies that that have got like comedy and drama and there's there's often quite a fine line between like humor and tragedy and the two can blur sometimes like people use humor to cope with really tragic events and i think there's something really interesting in that um comedy and tragedy the, you yeah. know that's the you know the masks when it comes to theater that's what it's about they blend yeah. so well love and hate all that Two sides of the same coin. Yeah. Uh, Past the Whiskey says, I arrived through a tropic thunder stream only to be devoid of the long man. Why don't you take two steps back and literally invite the long man? <laughs> I think he was busy when we were doing this stream, to be fair. Uh, but hey, you'll get to see him tomorrow night. Uh, Jack Sun says, uh, no, a whole not happening. <laughs> what? Uh, D Hicks says, hail drinker, any chance we'll get a 1980s Red Dawn review? Yes, a very good chance. Uh, Trenton Quinn says, oh man, this movie takes me back to middle school. The guys actually did the Tom Cruise dance at my buddy's wedding. Good times. <laughs> Cheers, fellas. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, oh, he says the groomsman, should I say? Yeah. Uh, that would be awesome to watch. Jeffrey Paris says, drinker, you towering giant of the anti-sobriety movement. When will Ooh. you be releasing a movie slash alcohol pairing? E.g., with this movie, I recommend Talisker and with this one, Mad Dog 2020 or Toilet Talk. <laughs> <laughs> the two are pretty close together to be honest uh yeah that's an interesting one actually um i don't know if you i don't know if you need a specific alcohol pairing with a specific film it depends on the person maybe but i'll see what i can do david murdoch says good to see the two of you tackle kiss kiss bang bang or the nice guys uh two films that show shane black could make good movies at one time um yeah you wouldn't know it now no He's uh, he's a man who peaked early. Um, Le Chevalier Delise says, "Hail guy, sorry, yeah, hail guys. Love this movie, so quotable. What is it with you people? What do you mean, you people? What, <laughs> what do, do you, you mean, mean, you people? <laughs> Miss movies like this. Oh yeah, <laughs> Pierre Streets. Thank you for responding to my tweet. Have you seen the movie A Good Year by Ridley Scott with Russell Crowe? Great movie that always makes me laugh. Uh, yeah, I have seen it actually, and it's." It's a nice little movie. I can't remember what Ridley Scott had made before this one, but I know it was a quite a challenging shoot. And he just wanted a nice laid back movie in a lovely location. So he picked like the south of France and just made a good year. That's just one of those laid back chill sort of movies. I quite like it. Why not? Yeah. Uh, and it's all about drinking wine. So <laughs> what can you say? Um, 
Jack Sun says, try uh, the Bible Black Show. Uh, boobies everywhere, man. <laughs> I'll keep it in mind. Oh, wait. Well, what do they say? Uh, try the Bible Black Show. Seen it. It's an anime. It's just... It's just... Just just typical anime. Massive boobs. Well, it's, it's a little bit more than typical anime. <laughs> ah. It goes a little bit further. Yeah. Uh, well, you've got my interest now. I, uh, I just got to let you know, I got 20 minutes. Then I got okay. to jump to the, my, my schedule stream. Oh, thanks, man. Honestly, like, I didn't even expect to have you here for this, so... No, I've got 20 minute. more minutes. i got 20 more minutes. I'm okay. All right, I'm going to rattle through. I'll go super fast. Uh, RRTNZ says, Hail Drinker and Az, if you like pirates, check out Black Sails. R-rated, F-bombs, sex, and gory violence kind of Game of Thrones with pirates. A quasi-prequel to Treasure Island with, with real-life pirates thrown in. Ah, sounds all right. Uh, slap the console. Hail Drinker, have you ever seen The Gentleman? Would be a great vid considering it's a great recent film. That or maybe Underwater with Kristen Stewart. <laughs> Uh, Underwater is meant to be shit, isn't it? Which is yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That looks garbage. Oh, have you seen the gentleman? Uh, I don't think so. Ah, oh, so good. Who's it's in it? So good. It's uh, it's got Matthew McConaughey. Uh, it's got Colin Farrell. It's got the guy from uh, Sons of Anarchy. Um, it's got uh, uh. Hugh Grant plays great character in it, and it's fucking guy. It's Guy Ritchie on top form. Oh, we were talking about this. Yeah, it's just the other day. So good. I've yeah, it's so good, and it's got uh, the opening music to it is Cumberland uh, Gap, and it's fucking amazing that tune as well. Is uh, Hugh Grant music- not got like a total Cockney accent in it? Yeah, like, he plays like he rich, plays like a uh, sort of like an effeminate Cockney reporter type uh he's gay in it as well he, he's like so he's trying to chat up um what's he called keep forgetting his name from from sons of anarchy charlie house or whatever he's called charlie whatever he's called um it's it's brilliant it's it's one of those films that starts at the end and you you get this st- and it goes through the story oh nice uh, and it's it's so good. It uh, I love it. I could watch it every day and be happy. Hmm. Well, that's a pretty good recommendation then. I'll give it a go. Definitely, um, definitely, definitely. Because I haven't seen Charlie any Huffman, Guy Ritchie. Thank you. I haven't seen any Guy Ritchie's movies for a while, actually. So yeah. And I think it's been any good ones for a while, but this is this is absolute peak Guy Ritchie. Uh, this should have been Oscar nominated without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I mean, he did Man from Uncle, phenomenal. didn't he? And that was pretty decent. I've not seen that. It's all right. It's all right, actually. It's got a lot of his trademarks in it, like kind of skipping back and forth, like chronologically. Uh, yeah. The dialogue's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Good cast. It's got Hugh Grant in it as well, and um, Henry Cavill. So yeah, yeah, nice, yeah, yeah. Uh, nice um, and uh, oh, Mister Cannibal as well. Yep. Um, Antihero here says, "I want you to take a huge step back and literally fuck your own face." <laughs> Maybe the greatest line in movie history and a nice way to start a conversation. Yeah, it's a really bad way to start job interviews, though, so just keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Black Douglas says, RDJ's Lazarus character did Inception before no one did. Yeah, I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. Um, Andy Lydon says, uh, where has the drinker been a Scots uh, man with a tan? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's quite sunny here. It's been like that all summer. Basically, we've hardly had any rain, so I've got a little bit of a tan. Been really uh, chilly recently here. Oh, is it? Mm. Uh, I'm sorry. This is this could be the first time in history that Scotland's been warmer than England. I know. Uh, Karen Nielsen says, I almost blinded Jamie Lee Curtis on Freaky Friday. <laughs> Damn, this movie was just pure balls out fun. Whatever happened to that? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know too. Um, so People says, lost their sense of humour, mate. Yeah, they really did. Uh, Tropic Thunder 2, the making of the making of Tropic Thunder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paper in 314. Hail Caesar is a good self, similar self-parody movie. Ah, okay. Um, Black Douglas, Hot Shots Part Due. Yes, fantastic movie. Uh, Swim Swimmer Gaming says The Boys is the closest thing Yeah, to like something that's kind of funny these days. Although season two went a little bit off the rails. I did not enjoy season two. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was pretty like critical of it. I just think it's, it's starting to go woke. Uh, it's to Woke really and boring. Yeah. 
And and uh, the the thing though, they, they would try to say, "Hey, look, we're taking the piss out of girls. Get it done." And then at the end, it's like, "But really, no, girls get it done." Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what is it you get? Like a diverse team of women, like curb stomping a literal Nazi into the ground. Yeah. It's like that's a wet dream for most of the people on on Twitter. Yeah, it's so, so subtle. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Legion Steve says Hollywood couldn't make a film like Tropic Thunder now, even if they wanted to, because they keep hiring activists instead of writers. Yeah, they really do. Activists with no fucking talent. Uh, Jack Sun says, what would happen if suddenly movies were good? Would you only praise films? Boring. You'll have to start shitting on movies you like. No. <laughs> um, I would love to just praise films. Honestly, nothing would make me happier than to just go into the cinema, have an absolute blast and just be able to gush about it. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty much what I do on my second channel. Just talk about movies I love. And yeah, these I live mean, streams. You know, Tropic Thunder, all we did was just laugh and gush and, and, and you know, talk about the performances, how funny it was, how good it was. Uh, and people, you know, people like that as well. Sure, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of... Sh unfortunately, there's a lot of shit out there and, and because it comes under our radar, it's it's what we've got to talk about. And, um, yeah, it, it can get pretty damn negative at times, but when something like a Suicide Squad turns up, which is just a fun film, um, then you know you 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 gotta you gotta talk about it for what it is, which is just a great you know couple of hours of escapism. It's not woke. Um, it's pretty offensive in certain places, and and you know that's the kind of stuff we we need people to be offended again. That's yeah. what we need. We need people to get offended again. We need we need these pearl clutches, and my God, there are. People who are claiming to be uh, not woke, who are absolute pearl clutches in the same same remit that we're in. Oh my god! No, we we gotta we gotta uh, we gotta make movies and, and TV that offend people, that offend their sensibilities, and get them get them just you know understanding that life life is more than just fucking shouting and screaming at everyone to obey we need well, that yeah life is like the world is not your personal safe space and yeah. it's not designed to like accommodate you and all your ridiculous fucking issues and, and insecurities and stuff um, yeah. and once people get their head around that it's like oh yeah you can start enjoying things again um, make comedy offensive again yep um Casey McGregor says, Hail Drinker and Az, love this film. The Blu-ray talk really makes... <laughs> sorry, the HD versus Blu-ray talk really takes me back. Reminds me of one of my prized possessions, an HD DVD copy of The Frighteners that I got signed by Jake Busey and Jeffrey Ooh. Combs. Nice. Uh, that's cool. Right? Jake um, Busey. Yeah. <laughs> Just a chip off the old block. Oh, yeah. RRTNZ says, great stream, Boyles. So glad you mentioned the Cruz Nolte exchange in the crisis meeting. Made me howl with laughter in the cinema in 2008. Cruz's timing on now shut the fuck up is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just screams at him. It's great. Um, Godzilla Evolva says, never go full retard. Best wishes from Germany. Good advice for life. Um, yeah. I mean, that should, that should <laughs> never go be, full retard from Germany. Yeah, that should be my Twitter bio. Just never go full retard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Graham Paltakin says, Drinker, as would one of you please do a review of Jungle Cruise? It was intersectional feminist, wh white male hating woke trash. Please review. Um, yeah, I, I don't know much about it. Like, I thought it was just a pretty inoffensive Disney kids movie, but I could be wrong. It's all edu it's all uh, you know, educating the kids, it's all infiltrating now, it's all trying to slip the messages in everywhere. Ah, uh, the message. The message. <laughs> John Gibson says, we'd love to see you guys review The Player, another interesting look at Hollywood. Uh, the player. Yeah, player. Player. Get your Gulfstream G5. Player. Uh, Matt Storm says, South African fan who just wants to show my appreciation for your videos, Drinker, and they've got me through a difficult year. Thank you and oh. go away now. Thanks, man. <laughs> sorry you've had a shit year, but I hope it gets better, mate. Uh, Casey McGregor says, Fun facts, true to his word, RDJ actually does the DVD commentary in character. Yeah. Um, Jacob Babcock says, Iron Man 2 was okay. Uh, great, but not bad. Sorry, not great, but not bad. I actually liked Iron Man 3. I don't understand all the hate it gets. Um, I think it's just because, like, 
he really doesn't spend much time as Iron Man, and it just feels like him making a bunch of really dumb decisions. Well, uh, that is Tony Stark. Yeah, but I mean, that takes it to the next level. Like, here's my home address. I'm sure you won't just show up unexpectedly and destroy my house. No, no chance of that. Yeah, but he's uh, arrogant. He's arrogant and he's uh, cocky and he's self-absorbed and an alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind Iron Man 2 that much. Like, I think it was just let down by a really shit villain. Like, clearly they were saving all the good ones for, for the Avengers movies. And, yeah, like, Whiplash. Fucking hell. Like, who cares about him? I watched it recently because I went through them all recently. And I, I got to say, watching it in today's day and age, it was like it was like uh, a, a Citizen fucking Kane, as they like to always refer to. It, it, was just, it just was a good laugh. It was just such a good laugh comparative to what we get now. So if Iron Man 2 came out now, people would just be like, oh, it's just a great, you know, fun action superhero film. I know. It, it's then, so... It's so, could, 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 yeah. it's so depressing how the landscape shifted now, isn't it? It's like movies that were mediocre back 10 years ago are now like, wow, it's so fucking good compared to what we have today. Yep. But remember, Scarlet gets over-sexualized in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure she felt that way. I've been watching tons of behind the scenes of all these Iron Man films. One, two, three. ScarJo didn't give a fuck. She yeah. she didn't give a fuck at it's all. So interesting, isn't she's it? She's hamming up her outfits. You know, she's doing. You know, she's doing all this silly, sexy stuff as well. She's mucking about. No, she didn't give a toss back then whatsoever. She loved it. Yeah. It's funny how a lot of changes when you're when you're hurtling towards forty, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and your your future life as a Disney witch. Yeah. Uh, the Craigley Lawrence experience says, "Here's to my food, my favorite two chaps on YouTube." Thank you, mate. Oh. Appreciate it. Um, Delanda Hunt says, "Check out the movie Black Dynamite." Yeah, I fucking love that film. You just see Black Dynamite beating the shit out of Richard Nixon at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <None chucked. laughs> uh, oh Jared. <laughs> Jad, Jared uh, Abarka says, the critical drinker is honestly the only reliable father figure I have in my life. <laughs> uh, won't even look at the title if dad doesn't approve. <laughs> nice. Uh, Stybeck B says, thanks for recommending Ailstorm. It really speeded up pace of work in our restaurant today. Would you recommend to watch or play for a weekend? Um, oh, it's got to be Drink. It's the song that gets me started every day. Um I'm just checking the ones that I might have done on the night. I think I haven't quite got to them yet. Uh, Bimble Lagan says you should try and get on the Moisture Calls or sorry, Moist Criticals podcast. I feel like it would be a crossover that would rival Infinity War. Oh, I've not seen that. That's the that's the uh, Charlie the Penguins. Right. Okay. Uh, Trenton Quinn says still waiting for that Baywatch slow mo beach run, yo. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna do it one day. Uh, Oh, I think they're actually they there. Should I think. Be the Rocky, the Rocky and uh, Apollo Creed, really. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think we've caught up actually. Okay, I'm gonna have to jump him, afraid, because I got a, I got a, a strum that I'm already uh, words are hard. Yeah, <laughs> use your words, friend. Use yeah, your words. use words. Committed to. Yeah, it's Gary's birthday, so I'm just going to go on to that one. Oh, um, nice one. But uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having us so I could just go through some of the super chats with you, man. Now that we can go through the super chats again. Yeah, um, they're black. Big thank you to the audience. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, yeah, we'll do something. Do you know what we need to do soon? We need to go into the war zone, dude. We really do. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a while, and we need to enter the war zone as drunk as we possibly can be. Yeah, <laughs> get yourself another bottle of rum, man. Get a bottle Don't of wait rum for on. it to be delivered on the night, though. Like, have it ready in no, advance. No, yeah, gonna, yeah. this time we're going to be more prepared. Um, get it the day before. Get the rum going, and then, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, yeah. Oh, God, yeah, well, let's organize that. We'll organize that. Yeah, that sounds like a cracker, mate. But yeah, honestly, thanks for coming on for this, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. I shall speak to you soon. You take care, man. All right. Wish Gary a happy birthday for me. I will.
Bye. Right. Bye. All right. Cool. It's just me. Uh, so I think, yeah, I caught up with all the super chats from the other night. And yeah, I think there's just a few that's come in while I was doing this stream tonight. So I guess I'll just try and get through them. And then we're all good. So give me one second just here while I refresh the list. All right, here we go. So the first one here came in from Travis Blankenship. Says, love your stuff, critical drinker. Keep exposing those Hollywood hacks. I will fucking love doing it. Um, Adam Thumb says, hey, drinker, would you ever consider doing a review of Hellblade? It's definitely a game I would love to hear your thoughts about it. Um, yeah, I would happily do that. Um, I kind of remember the last time I actually played Hellblade, but uh, I do remember it back in the day being pretty good. Uh, Meteor Johnson says, keep up the good work. Much respect from Atlanta. Cheers, mate. Much appreciated. Chuxenhausen says, I've been meaning to say this for the longest time. I love it every time As says my username. It's legendary. <laughs> nice. I'm sorry I couldn't get him on for... Or sorry, he's gone now, so he can't say it again. Uh, Sam School says, how is Tatiana doing, drinker? I'd say she's stable right now in her coma. No, no, she's fine. Um... Ben Case says, have you seen the trailer for Clint Eastwood's Crime Macho? Uh, no, I haven't, I'm afraid, so I don't know about that one. Iron Man himself says, hey, critical drinker, big fan. Off topic, I could listen to you give a eulogy and throw in curse words. Sides will burst. Best. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed my stuff. Uh, Clamum says, you earned this due to the vid thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love that image. Like, player. Uh, Kevin O'Neill says, Drink or you pickled pundit. Your recent acknowledgement of Tom Cruise's acting chops made me go back and watch The Last Samurai. You should talk about The Last Samurai. I, I absolutely will. That's definitely a candidate for, for my second channel. It's a great movie and I really enjoy it. Uh, another Dave in Paradise says, Evening drinker. I hear you're a big fan of Zulu. My great great granddad was in the actual war and was portrayed in the film. Didn't know if you fancied a chat. That's fucking cool. Um, I'd love to know who who he was, which soldier he was in the movie, or, you know, which soldier the movie referenced that he was. But, uh, yeah, I love that that film. It's just a great, old-fashioned British war movie. Uh, and the the cinematography, the the, the scenes of, of Africa and the huge Zulu army is just brilliant. Uh, Kieran Jonathan says, what are your thoughts on The Simpsons? Would you ever do a video on it? Uh, the Simpsons was great 20 years ago. Uh yeah, feels like it's outstayed. It's welcome, welcome by a long way. I stopped watching it a long time ago. Just it wasn't making me laugh anymore. Uh, Eric Robinson says, "Love you, my drinker. Do you have any advice for up and coming screenwriters? I've got several horrors under my belt, and I'm not sure what comes next." I don't know, mate. I mean, honestly, um, I'm not really uh, a screenwriter. I'm just a novelist. Um, so we're, you know, they kind of operate in different realms, I guess. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how you begin to get noticed as a screenwriter. How you approach, um, you know, production companies and stuff. I assume you can get yourself an agent like anyone else, and they can promote you. So I guess that would be the first place to start. Uh, Robert Ayala says, "Keep up the great work. Your videos are awesome. Thanks, mate." Uh, Farewell, Thunderchild says, "Started watching Farscape again. My God, I want to be reincarnated as Claudia Black's showerhead. <laughs> I can't wait to see Moya off her." Boom, boom. Tsh. Yeah, um, Claudia Black is hot as fuck in Farscape, I'm not going to lie. And Aaron Sun is genuinely one of the great female characters of sci-fi. Uh, awesome character, great actress that plays her, and I just love Farscape as a show. I will review it one day. Um, Perfidious Brit says, why Marvel and DC all the time? How about a good 2080 adaptation? I'd humbly suggest Rogue Trooper or Strontium Dogs. Any thoughts? Uh, not seen them, so I couldn't tell you, but uh, yeah, I'm happy to move away from Marvel and all the DC stuff. It's just that's what's at the cinema at the moment. So I kind of have to, you know, after like a year of nothing coming out, like I'm quite happy to just have some movies to review. It's just unfortunate that they're uh, fucking comic book movies again. Um, but I'm sure we'll get beyond them. I'm looking forward to Dune. I've actually got a video made that I'm going to put out after this uh, talking about the trailer for Dune and what I think about the movie. So uh, we'll get that done shortly. Um, shut the fuck up, Joe Rogan says, I will write a memoir of my non-existent time in Afghanistan. Call me Four Feather Laidback. <laughs> ah, nice. Uh, Wolf's Pain says, just realized that Tom Cruise pulled a less douchey Tropic Thunder producer last year in that leaked audio clip. 
Uh, also thoughts from Resident Evil 4. Um, yeah, like that was all about the, the face masks and stuff when he was doing Mission Impossible. Just a guy popping off, really. Um, on Resident Evil 4, good game. Really enjoyable. Good atmosphere. It gets a bit stupid towards the end. Um, and I think it started Resident Evil down a bad path of being really action-packed instead of survival horror. But on its own, it's good. Um, Unhinged Entertainment says, the indie scene is where it's at. Like my independent comic, Absolute 2, currently on Indiegogo. That'll be my last plug for it, I promise. Hey, Laz and Drinker. Thanks, man. Uh, Simple Jack, can't believe I missed this stream first time around. <laughs> Don't worry, Simple Jack, you m make me happy. Uh, Salad Cream Boy says, we're starting to see non-woke movies such as The Suicide Squad and Free Guy bleed through. Do you think this is a sign that the worst is over? I fucking hope so. Um, we just need them to do well now and prove that there's a market for that kind of thing. And I'm kind of disappointed that the Suicide Squad kind of flopped. I really didn't expect that. Uh, David Lim says, have you seen the Transformers movie, the original from 1986? Uh, yeah, probably when I was a kid, but I don't remember much from it. I remember like Optimus Prime dies in it, I think. It was fucking traumatizing back in the day. Um I know that the, there was such a negative reaction to that that when they did the G.I. Joe movie, they decided not to kill off Duke, even though he was totally meant to die. Um, Andrew Clark says, could you guys convince EFAP to watch The Rocketeer? I could try. Um, they could probably do it as a as an EFAP movie, for sure. Deal Ramil says, have you seen The Sopranos? If not, you should. See, I watched bits and pieces of it back in the day, but I never watched it all the way through, so... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to give a proper review of it. King Crow says, uh, yo, I thought these were on Thursdays. Yeah, this is just a catch-up, man. Just a super chat catch-up because of YouTube Studio being broke. Uh, the John Beck says, Vinnie Jones has record for fastest red card. I kick in, in the naughty bits at the start of a soccer game handshake is the rumor. See you both next meet up. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Andre Lopez gave me $5, so thanks, mate. Uh, Stephen Matthews says, Hey Drinker, I believe you'll really enjoy Mr. In Between, Aussie hitman drama, black comedy. Bloody awesome, hilarious. Sounds all right. Uh, the Magin Trunk says, Speaking of Farewell Thunderchild, I know it's a movie, but have you heard of Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds? If not, a video on it would be great. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Megan Lukes, Could you review Fat Man starring Mel Gibson? The craziest Christmas movie I've ever seen, and the kid looks like a young Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> Ben Shapiro looks like a young kid still. Uh, Farewell, Thunderchild. I endorse Ron's super chat. As belt it out, mate. Uh, Spider Seeker says, I watched Last of Us 2 Happy Hour. Had to call my best friend afterwards to remind myself that there are still good things in life. Cheers to both of you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, Marek Zelinski says, Drinker, who is doing your makeup? Is it Tatiana? After consuming this much alcohol, you would look so good while the face is red as a beetroot. Is this the mountain fresh air? Currently, I'm using Irish ocean air. Advice? That's fine. Um, I, I guess it hasn't kicked in yet, but eventually the cracked veins will appear on my nose and it'll go all red, so who knows? Give it time. Uh, DZMN says, Drinker, I spend more time watching your content than anything else on stream or movies, so here's a tip. Thanks. Thanks very much, man, and uh, I appreciate that tip, so thank you. Uh, MGE says, have you watched Person of Interest? It's a pretty interesting thriller that gradually crosses the streams with a bit of sci-fi thrown into it. Uh, no, I've heard good things about it, though, so I would be, I'd be keen to watch that. Um, Farewell, Thunderchild. Watched Afterlife on the rower. And no spoilers, I shouted out loud, don't you fucking dare during the final scene. Very rare to be that invested. Uh, yeah. Brilliant character work, brilliant writing, great performances all around. So, yeah, it's a great show. Star Trek of 58 says, Hollywood hate the truth, thanks, Ricky. Um, ponder this, Hollywood's SJWs alike, great minds think alike I say fools seldom differ, plus Ghostbusters 2016 sucks, it does indeed, uh, Dread Emperor bet give me nightmares <laughs> yeah um, oh, he, Nick Dolte was great in this movie Josh Courtleave says, just found your channel this week, love it, hilarious, thank you mate, Dave the Batman just wanted you guys to know a nutless monkey can do your job, it can indeed um but we do our best. Will G says, have you all seen Pap Papignon? If not, you need to check it out. Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman in a French prison camp. Hoffman's best role to me. It is a great movie. Um, 
yeah, the, Steve McQueen really goes through the ringer in it when he's put in solitary confinement and stuff. And uh, yeah, for a movie that was made so long ago, it's got kind of a modern feel to it. So yeah, great performances by the two of them. I like that movie. Uh, Cease says, pronounced as Case, sorry, Case. Dear Drinker, what do you make of the life and death of Colonel Blimp? There are so many life lessons in that film. Releasing a film about friendship between a German and an Englishman in 1943 is courageous. Christ, that's an old movie. Um, yeah, I remember it as like it's it's a kind of chronicle of this guy's uh, career in the military. How he starts off as like a young um, officer, like idealistic and stuff, and gradually, you know, his experiences sour him and make him cynical. Uh, and by the end, he's this like old, out of date like colonel who just gets completely owned by by people who are much younger and kind of smarter than him. Um, but yeah, from what I remember, it was a great movie. Uh, Dave Ralph says, Drinker, a little off topic, but have you ever seen the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven? Both cuts stand out well enough. A surprise given uh, what was cut and didn't really show in the theatre version. Yeah, I had to watch that through um, EFAP movies. Um, and honestly, I just find it really, really slow and boring. Like, I felt the things that were cut out were just longer versions of the scenes that we already had. Um, it was... It was very slow. It was very dour and serious. And yeah, I just wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, and I don't think the director's cut really helped much. I mean, fair enough if you liked it, but yeah, it just wasn't for me. I think there was big long stretches in that film where nobody was even speaking, like none of the EFAP guys, because we just couldn't think of anything interesting to say. Um, Little Ren 116 says, big fan from New York. Thanks, man. Uh, TSB. Would you consider reviewing The Hunt? No one in sight oh, has loved the channel. Um, yeah, The Hunt. I would need to re I would need to rewatch it. I think. Um, Captain Haddock says, "Greetings from Germany. Ever considered doing a video about heat with De Niro and Pacino? I think it's worth a drinker recommends or an extra shot." Uh, yeah, it definitely is. Either one of those two would be fine. But yeah, Heat's a great movie. Um, Karia Smith says. <coughs> Sorry, you didn't say that. I've binge watched Farscape at least twice a year. So well well spent time, I would say. Captain Haddock also says, and an idea for your next production, Hell, The Wizard of Oz. Those shooting conditions were absolutely ridiculous. Ah, I didn't know much about that, so I'll need to look it up. Mala says, What color are your walls and do you get a lot of natural light coming in? Uh Yeah, they're blue. Um yeah, yeah, I get plenty of light. Like, it's dark here now, so you can't really tell. But, yeah, I can't, like, if I do a live stream during the day, like, I have to close all the blinds and everything because I look like a fucking ghost with the natural light coming in. It's just too bright. Um, Steve Murphy says, do you like Cinemassacre, the angry video game nerd? It would be awesome to see you both collab. Uh, I used to like him back in the day. Um, kind of drifted away from it, I guess. Um yeah, like I felt after a while like he wasn't really that bothered for doing it anymore, but and he wanted to make, move beyond the, the video game nerd. Uh, but yeah, some of his early stuff was fantastic. Just like ranting about these old games that like were so ridiculously hard you would never figure them out. <laughs> they were great. Um, Troy Tempest says, how about a review of Mad Max and Mad Max 2? Definitely. Have you seen For All Mankind? Quality sci-fi. Thanks for all your videos, mate. Um, yeah, so I Definitely do reviews on the Mad Max movies. I think it's a really interesting franchise to talk about, all the different phases it's gone through. Um, even Fury Road. Uh, for All Mankind, haven't seen it yet. Um, G-Man says, PCU came out 27 years ago poking fun at woke culture, albeit not the extreme we see today. Uh, are the people made fun of in the movie The Current Woke? They could well be. I mean, what we're seeing now is so close to parody, like you, you almost can't mock it because it's it's so ridiculous to begin with. Um, the Metal King says, what's your opinion of the Stargate shows and will you ever do reviews of them? SG-1, I totally loved. Um, it was on for so long. I think it just exhausted its premise. It did everything, but like I was happy to see it end. But yeah, it was a fantastic show for its time um, and it holds up pretty well even today. Um, Atlantis was all right. It was a bit uneven. Um, I liked the premise, but then it felt like they didn't quite know what to do with it. Um, Stargate Universe, I didn't really watch much of that. It just felt like another Stargate show, really. It didn't really add much to it. And I think it got cancelled after like one or two seasons. It didn't last very long. But yeah, SG-1 was fantastic. 
Perfidious Brit says, knowing your love of Zulu, have you read any of the George McDonnell, uh, McDonald Fraser Flashman is the anti-hero we all need? Yeah, I've heard about the Flashman movies, or sorry, books. Um, he's meant to be a fantastic hero. Um, but yeah, I've not read them myself. Christopher says, I got nothing. Keep up the good work and have a drink on me. I will. Uh, and thanks for your donation, mate. Marek Zelinski, also thanks for your work in general, making this clown world make more sense, even through your crit, yeah, your cynical lenses, giving me the laugh since I found your channel. <laughs> Cheers, man. Uh, RRTNZ says, drinker, you whiskey-fueled wordsmith. I'm going to second the recommendation of the others for The Guard, the funniest Irish film ever. Whether you review it or not, you won't regret it. Uh, I've got to see this then because I'm hearing nothing but good things about it. So the guard shall be seen. Uh... Wynn Joyner says, Drinker, love your content. Always the best entertainment content out there. Have a pint on me, you glorious drunkard. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, Jonas Larson, Drinker, you self-made husk of a man. I am. Uh, what is the most cerebral Scott Adkin movie? Uh, I don't think he's really known for cerebral movies. He's he's your stunt guy, action movie dude. Um, but yeah, he needs he needs to get more like bigger budget leading man roles because he's an awesome you know he's an awesome action guy, um, and he's got the potential there. Um, Kikula said, "Did you know Star Trek Discovery story was ripped off uh, of a game published on Steam? The the creator took them to court. The game is amazing, space blue bear, and so on." Yeah, I've heard about this. I don't know if he if he won or if it's been settled out of court or whatever. But like when I saw all the the similarities between the two things, it was kind of ridiculous. There's no way it could have been coincidence. Um, but I hope he wins in that case. Uh, Andre Lopez says, "I recently saw the Val Kilmer documentary. Have you seen it? If so, what are your thoughts?" I haven't seen it, but um, yeah, I guess it's talking about like. His career ups and downs and you know his, his cancer and stuff like that kind of tragic what's happened to him in recent years like the guy's really been through the mill um i mean don't get me wrong in the early 90s he was definitely a dick but a lot of actors are i suppose uh, but yeah i'd be quite interested to watch that actually because i used to like him as an actor uh oh apparently that guy lost his court case so that sucks uh Right. Uh, hey, Drinker, have you ever seen that show Still Game? Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's the, it started off on Chewing the Fat and then they got their own sort of spin-off show. But yeah, Still Game's pretty decent. Uh, are you going to review What If? Probably not, to be honest. Um, it's just a kid's show. I don't, I don't really know if it's got enough there to keep my interest. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, Nicholas Swank for $50. Jesus, man. Thank you. Uh, best reviewer on YouTube here, boys. Buy a few on me. Thank you, mate. Um, and thank you for your generosity. Um, <laughs> Gaz, 3447, I touch myself when I mention your name. I expect no less. <laughs> uh, right. I think, uh, oh, yeah, there's one more here. Uh, James says, how do you decide what to review? Are there specific criteria or is it just by gut feel? Thanks for all you do. Very intelligent work. Um, yeah, it's kind of a combination. Like, if there's stuff that's really, like, of interest to a lot of people at the time um, and I think I've got something I can add to it then yeah I'll review it like if it's a big new movie release or whatever it makes sense to talk about it um, if it's you know there's other times when there's not much out and I've got a chance to just review things that interest me or that I felt like I wanted to talk about for a while or in the case of my second channel just share my enjoyment of a movie with other people and like maybe they'll watch it and they'll enjoy it too so yeah, that, it, it kind of varies then depending on how much time I've got and what's happening. Um, so that's generally how I do it. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I think I've made it through all the Super Chats, so thanks for, for everyone for tuning in tonight. Thanks for Az for joining me for a little bit. Uh, and thanks for all the extra Super Chats and all your generosity. I'm going to go away and try and get my Dune video up because uh, I think it's all ready to go, so I should publish it out just shortly. But yeah. In the meantime, I'm going to go away now, so thank you.